Today I'm going to be taking you through how to install a 5 megapixel fisheye camera. So this is one that you've probably seen over maybe some office spaces or in some shops um, where it gives you a complete 360 degree view of everything happening in the store. It's like a distorted uh, fisheye view, you know, but you can see uh, over a very large area. So this camera is manufactured by Amcrest and we're going to be installing this one today. Um, note that this is a power over ethernet camera. So that means that this has to be hardwired into whatever networking solution you have. And usually this cable is good enough, um, although it does come with some other cables and dongles, like for example, if you want audio or two-way audio, um, this one's audio in, audio out, or maybe reversed. Um, but you can speak through this camera as well. I haven't tried that, but. Um, and it comes with everything, a mounting uh, card, uh, mounting plate, almost like a smoke detector plate. It's got screws, um, and of course a quick start guide instructions. So uh, I've already done this, so I'm gonna be taking you through how I did it, um, and hopefully you learned something from it. So first things first, this is a power over ethernet camera, and that means that the power to the camera, there's no separate power uh, cord. Actually, there is, but I'll show you in a minute. Um, the power ordinarily will come through the ethernet cable. So for a lot of folks who maybe haven't seen a power over ethernet cable or um, only know of the ethernet cable as their, uh, their data cable, the ethernet cable can also carry power over these pins. So this camera doesn't need a separate power supply. However, uh, that only works if you have a power over ethernet capable uh, switch or router. And I don't have either of those. So Amcrest sent me a separate power adapter and this can plug into uh, this cable here. So here is the, the power adapter that they gave me. And this one has an output of uh, two amps uh, and 12 volts. So that is what would ordinarily come through the ethernet cable itself, and you wouldn't need a separate power supply, but um, Amcrest was kind enough to send me this because I don't have a power over ethernet switch or router. To set up your camera, you're going to connect first the ethernet cable. So this is your data cable. This is where the video feed goes to your router, and you can plug it into one of the ports on the back of your just a home wireless router. Um, if you had uh, like a power over ethernet switch or something like that, um, you could definitely um, use that as well. So you switch a router, it's more of your enterprise environments. This is just a home router that I had, so I set this up. Um, you want to plug it into one of the ports on the back, uh, one, two, three, and four, not the yellow port. The yellow port is something different. So just pick one of those, those four ports on the back. It doesn't have to be um, any particular one, just any one is fine. So that's your data. And then because this router is not power over ethernet, um, I have to connect my uh, power adapter as well. So this camera is currently powered on. Um, it's got power and it's got data. If you wanted to connect the audio, you can. Um, one is audio in, one's audio out. I chose not to, um, but that's a separate functionality. Keep in mind at this point, we don't know which IP address this camera is hooked up to. We just hooked it up um, to any, any port on the back. And this router is going to provision automatically an IP address for this camera, but we don't know what it is. So we're gonna have to figure that out um, and tell the app basically which address to listen to so that it can view what's going through this camera lens. So there are two ways to set up this camera. Um, one is through the Amcrest Cloud, and the other is through Amcrest View Pro. The Amcrest Cloud solution, this stores your footage on Amcrest Cloud servers. So that means you don't have to worry about storing it um, on your own PC or your own computers or downloading it to a tape or anything like that. It all gets stored automatically on Amcrest Cloud servers. You have 100% peace of mind if anybody were to come into your shop or your house or your office and, and damage things, Amcrest has it all on camera um, at their uh, location. So 
You don't have to worry about it, peace of mind. It is a paid solution because you are taking up space or you'll be booking space on Amcrest servers. So they will charge something for that. The other solution that I used is the Amcrest View Pro application. This is a completely free application. Uh, even though it says Pro in the name, it's completely free. And uh, what it does is it offers a live view of the camera um, and it, it also offers historical view, viewing, but it depends on the onboard storage in the camera. So basically it connects to the camera and it like looks at what the camera has stored on board, um, on board the physical camera. So what that means is if somebody were to damage the camera or to take it away, steal the camera, break the camera, um, you would potentially lose all of your footage and you wouldn't be able to recover that. So uh, Amcrest View Pro is free, uh, but it comes with a risk. If there's physical damage to the camera or somebody steals your tapes, um, you're kind of out of luck. So in addition to these two, there is also the NVR solution. That's a network video recording solution. Um, it's kind of like in the old, in the old, the old days, uh, 1980s, 1990s, where they had tapes, surveillance tapes, physical tapes in the shop. Um, it's very similar to that, but uh, you'd have to find a space um, in your office, in your um, in your garage, and you know somewhere to store the footage from this camera, and it'd have to download. And then again, it would be stored on prem, on site, um, and you'd have to find a place for that. Um, and again, if anybody were to come in and damage it or steal your tapes, you would lose all the footage. So that again is free, uh, but that's an additional cost, uh, like an initial setup cost, but the monthly you know, recurring cost is free. Versus Amcrest Cloud, which is free up front, but you have to pay monthly, like a subscription service because you're booking space on Amcrest servers. So just to recap, three different ways. One is Amcrest Cloud, that's free up front, but you pay a monthly fee. Um, you have Amcrest View Pro, which just offers um, a live view and some historical footage based on what is stored physically on board the camera. And the third way is the NVR solution. You have to buy a separate server for that, um, and you have to configure that separately. We're going to find out which address your router provisioned for your IP camera. So you're going to go to 192.168.1.1 in any browser. Uh, it doesn't matter if you use your home desktop or you use your iPhone or your iPad, um, mobile, doesn't matter. So 192.168.1.1, and then you'll pull up a list of connected devices. It might be buried in some of those menus. Um, but as you can see here on my screen, we have active clients, AMC, so Amcrest for Amcrest, and then a whole string of numbers. The IP address, that's the important part is 192.168.1.109. So those last three digits, 109. The live Amcrest Live View app, uh, or the, sorry, the Amcrest View Pro app uh, will ask you for this IP address. Basically it reads from the router um, at this particular address on a particular port, don't worry about the port, but you need to tell the app where to look for the live view from this camera. So there you have it, 109, and I'll show you what it looks like from the app. When you first download the app, you're going to see a screen. I have my device already added, but you're going to hit add device, and then it will show you all these different options. Remember, you have a power over ethernet camera. This is a power over ethernet camera, so we're going to hit POE camera. And it will ask you, the instructions that come in the box will tell you to do a P2P connection. That's a peer-to-peer -peer connection. You can do that, um, but really the right way to do it, at least I think, is the IP connection. Uh, this will make it available, make the, the live view of the camera available anywhere in your house, uh, as long as you have your iPad or your uh, device connected to the same router. So you're gonna hit IP, and this is where you're going to put in that IP address that we found from your router. So you're gonna enter that here. I've already done that, so I'm gonna go back. 
um, and I'll show you what the live view looks like now. So um, here's the name that I assigned to my camera. It'll ask you to assign a name and a password. Password. Um, and then you can hit start live view. It will connect and then it shows you. Now, as you can see, this is one of the areas where Amcrest might improve. The live view is all distorted if you view it vertically. Now, if I turn it horizontally, then it becomes much clearer and you can see everything that's happening. It's got that nice circular fish eye view. So this is perfect. This is the live view as we saw. If you have a micro SD card installed, you'll be able to view historical footage as well. So this app will look into the camera and look at what's on board saved. Um, so how you access the historical footage is through playback. I'm going to add Amcrest Fisheye. Now you'll see there's no recording because I don't have a micro SD card installed. But if you did, you would be able to scroll um, and see historical footage maybe from you know days ago or uh, months ago. Of course, the other option is to buy the Amcrest cloud application where you can store all of this historical footage in the cloud. You don't need a micro SD card and um, it's basically you'd be able to view historical footage anytime you want from any device um, and it's very safe and very secure, but it does cost a monthly fee. And there you have it. Anytime you want to view what's going on in your camera, you simply go to the Amcrest View Pro application. You open that up and it shows you the live view. Uh, it's distorted if you hold it vertically, you turn it horizontally and you get that nice clear view of everything that's happening within your space.